Hey everybody, welcome back. We are on Unit 2, Economic Indicators in the Business Cycle. In this video, guys, we're focused on the cost of inflation, which is subunit 2.5, and this is part one. This video, guys, is focused on these three major costs of inflation. In the part two video, we're going to be talking about the cost of unanticipated inflation on different groups of people, such as lenders and borrowers, and employers and employees. But for this video, again, here's my major cost of inflation I want to get through. Here's number one, menu cost. Menu cost, guys, it's really straightforward. It's the cost of changing prices. Now, I kind of like to make a little play off the name menu cost, so I like to say the following saying. Menu cost is a great example of menu cost, but menu cost is not all there is to menu cost. So, of course, when you see that term right there, you think, hey, menu cost, that's changing prices on menus, which you have to do during inflation, and that is absolutely an example of what we mean by menu cost. But menu cost, guys, is much bigger than that, right? It's changing prices anywhere, on every pamphlet, brochure, every billboard, every database, anywhere you have your prices printed or, or uh, displayed or uh, have them categorized, you have to change those prices. So the use of resources to changing prices anywhere is this thing we mean by menu cost. And why is that a cost to an economist? Because just what I said, we're gonna have to use resources to change prices, and that's the only reason they're doing it is because of inflation. And those limited resources could have made things of value, right? They could have made goods and services instead. So this is a cost of inflation because we're using resources to do this thing simply because of inflation. Next, shoe leather cost. This is an old term for a cost that is still with us. For you to understand this cost, guys, I've got this little bar chart right here, okay? This bar chart is supposed to be how the different financial assets that we hold our wealth in, okay? So our wealth, okay, their average household, is distributed between these financial assets. Maybe a few more, but in general, these are the big categories. We have them in stocks, bonds, savings accounts, and this thing called M1, which is your cash. Now you can see, I'm trying to make this big distinction between M1 and these three. Let's talk about these three first. Those three guys, those financial assets all provide a return. Stocks, on average, appreciate, but they also pay dividends out to their shareholders, which is a distribution of profits. So when you hold stocks, you get a distribution of profits or that, that the stock value appreciates, okay? But they generally, on average, do provide a return. Bonds also provide a return. They provide interest, right? If you hold a bond, you get paid interest. And the financial wealth, or your wealth, in this financial asset class here, savings accounts, also gets paid interest. So all of these provide a return, so they all do an okay job, some better than others, of staying up with inflation. So the idea is, when you hold your wealth in these three buckets, your real wealth, how, much, how many goods and services your wealth can buy, stays pretty much up with inflation, okay? And, and there's something else that's kind of important to understand. These two, like I said, pay interest, and when inflation ticks up, there's this thing called the inflation premium that goes up, and so the nominal interest rate, which is really the dollar amount of return you get when you uh, hold these two financial assets, also goes up. So interest rates go up with inflation, or at least nominal interest rates do. And so, here's the thing, guys. When you hold your financial wealth here, your real wealth, generally keeps up with inflation. M1, that's a different story. What again is M1? Well, that's the currency you hold in your wallet or your purse, or the, your financial wealth in your checking account. So checking account and currency. Neither of those provide much return. Currency, there's no return that you get on holding currency. Checking accounts, usually very, very little, and oftentimes for most checking accounts, it's actually zero, okay? So the return is very, very, very small. So much so, I don't even mind you thinking of it as being zero. So here's the problem. When you have inflation, prices of goods and services are going up, right? The price level going up. What's happening to your real wealth? The amount of goods and services your wealth can buy. Guys, that's going down. And so here's the deal. When inflation starts to tick up, guys, that cost starts to increase of holding your wealth here. And you start saying, hey, I need to hold less of my wealth in this category. I need to hold more of my wealth in these. And so this little red bar right here, we erase that red bar, we get rid of that M1, we're going to move it over. And so now your M1 is just right there. Now, why hold any of your wealth in M1? Because you have to. Guys, you have to pay your rent or your mortgage. You have to pay your utility bill and your insurance bill. Guys, here's the basic thing. you got to buy goods and services. You have to buy goods and services. 
And your M1 is what you use to buy those goods and services. You have to hold some of your wealth there. But as inflation ticks up, you're going to want to hold less and less of your wealth here, and it's going to start having to use more and more time to manage your wealth between this category and these. Again, as inflation goes up, you think of that nominal interest rate, especially in regards to these two, right? As the inflation rate ticks up, that nominal interest rate goes up, so the cost, the opportunity cost of holding your wealth here is increasing, so you're going to hold less of this. And now you're spending that time again. That time is that shoe leather cost of managing your wealth between these. Now, why is it called shoe leather cost? Well, before on online or internet banking, guys, we used to literally have to go to the bank and manage our wealth between these types of financial assets. And that was what we meant. It was that continually going back to the bank. Inflation starts going higher and higher and higher in the society. People are going to have to go to the bank more and more often. They're truly wearing out the shoe leather. Okay, their shoe leather on their shoes. So that was the idea there. So that's that cost. Another waste. A waste of resource time. Finally, unit of account cost. This is the cost associated with the dollar being our unit of measurement or our unit of account when it comes to how we communicate value. What do I mean by that, guys? Think about it. Every good and service has a price tag on it. That price tag is to communicate the value of that good or service. But it's not just that. You go work somewhere. You get a contract, right? A labor contract. Your wage or salary is going to be communicated in dollar. That's the value of your work, right? You go get an apartment, okay? That rent is going to be the value of your apartment. You buy a home, the price of the home. I go on and on, right? The dollar is the way we communicate value. And here's the issue, guys. When inflation happens, the value of the dollar goes down. And it becomes a less reliable um, unit of account or a unit of measurement because it's changing. Here's the idea, guys. There's a very simple application of unit of account. Here, you're sitting here thinking about buying a Coca-Cola. That Coca-Cola has a price tag on it. The price is one dollar. Now, to an economist, guys, your eyes don't stop at that one dollar. Your eyes look through the one dollar, and they see all the other goods and services you could have bought with that one dollar, or a fraction of goods and services you could have bought with that one dollar. They see the true opportunity cost of spending that dollar, the other goods and services you're going to have to forego. Here's the idea. When inflation starts to tick up, maybe it goes to 10%, 20%, 50%, guys, prices start changing so quickly. We start really losing sight of what the prices of other goods and services are. So we're going to make bad decisions, right? We're looking at something. We can see the price of that thing, but now our conception of what is $1, what really can $1 buy, is now murky because prices of goods and services are changing so fast, we don't really have a good idea of what the real value of one dollar represents anymore. So we're going to make bad decisions. And guys, remember, what's economics all about? It's about decision making. And so if we're starting to make bad decisions, that is definitely a cost. We're not going to be able to make the best decisions if we have a lot of inflation out there. Anyhow, those are your three major costs of inflation. Take a look at video two to find out those costs of unanticipated inflation. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one.